Greetings from the blackest veil of the land of the unliving. Are you ready to delve into topics most macabre? <laughs> I hope you are. For now, it's the annual spooky episode of Opinions May Vary. Thanks, John. Hey, everybody. I'm happy to have you here. Happy to be here, as always. Uh, JR is on a, a special uh, sabbatical this week. A sabbatical, you say? Yeah, he has very important stuff to do and is being a very, very, very busy man. So busy he left these succulent headphones <laughs> just <laughs> lying here and I'm wearing them. They're like I'm being hugged by a baby that's so, on my face. <laughs> so I'm using my mic and my headphones, but mm-hmm. John's using JR's mic and JR's headphones. <laughs> And I'm just really close talking to it. I'm getting all my just aerosol spit just on it. It's delicious. So I really hope you just enjoy just the smell of my spit in this for the rest of just whenever. He's going to love this. I I hope the the rest of our listeners find this as entertaining. Oh, I'm rubbing my, I'm rubbing my nose on it now. (laughs) <laughs> All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, welcome to episode 241 of Opinions May Vary. Uh, I'm your co host, Alex. It, it sounds so weird saying it myself and not having Jared do the intro. It's It's been 240 episodes of, of Jared doing the intro. It's uh, a brave new world. <laughs> and we have John back with us. Yes. Back from beyond the grave. I'm alive. It's fine. <laughs> So uh, John is is one of our our recurring guests who who qualifies as a co-host when he's on. That means uh, a lot. That means it's, a lot. I'm glad. I'm Thank glad. You. Uh, but like you said, uh, it's it's the, our last episode of October, uh, and so that means it's most likely our last spooky, haunt-filled Halloween episode. Yes, but not the last spooky one, because I was saying to you that we should do a Christmas episode and talk about all the messed up, Germanic, crazy European characters that no one knows about. Like, everyone knows about Krampus, but mm-hmm. there's, like, Black Rupert, which is, like, a, a dirty Santa Claus that beats children. And then there's Black Pete, which is gross and weird and kind of racist that we'll uh. talk about. But like, uh, <laughs> Oh, right, Black Pete. Yeah, he's yeah. like the little page boy in blackface. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, very strange tradition. Don't ever go to the Netherlands unless you want to get, like, free weed or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's legal there, not free. Um, but, uh, yeah. So that would be a fun one in the future. And uh, we have an, uh, an additional guest later on, which I, I arranged a, a call earlier today that, that I'm going to add in at the end of the episode. Um, but we'll talk about that later. We'll get there. For now, uh, we talked to some haunt attraction people already. We reviewed a... a Stranger Things, which is like one of the best revolutionary, groundbreaking, like thriller, horror, suspense TV shows yeah. to hit Netflix. Oh, so good. <clears throat> it's like, what if. Uh, who did the thing? I can't think right now. <laughs> who directed the thing? A John Carpenter, Carpenter and Spielberg had a baby, <laughs> and that baby was somehow not an abomination. In, which is funny, I'm remembering now, but not when we recorded Will's episode. Yeah. Uh, Someone compared it to Super 8. Super 8, I can see that. It's like Super 8, it was like a, a successful, and it's like we fell into a parallel universe where our Super 8 was successful and like <laughs> good. Like I can see where Super 8 was trying to go, uh-huh. but like it just fell a little short of that. Mm-hmm. Where like uh, Stranger Things, it's like they, it's like the difference between someone who's really trying to do something well mm-hmm. and then someone making it look effortless. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Stranger Things was. Like, yeah. It's just effortless. Like, you're already, like, in the world. Right. Like, boom. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But, anyway. So, Halloween. Halloween. We haven't specifically talked about Halloween stuff. Halloween's great. Um, last year, when we had Milta on, we touched on, like, Devil's Night and Cabbage Night. Yeah. Apparently, in Detroit, it's it used to be just the worst night of the year. <laughs> like, cars rolling down the street on fire. <laughs> And just, like, horses that look like they should have policemen on, just wandering the streets. <laughs> like, where's the policeman that used to be on that horse? 
<laughs> it's it's the Yikes. horseless headsman. Yeah, the horseless headsman. <clears throat> and was did where was the crow based? The, the, crow? the crow was did that they Detroit specify? or was that? It was kind of like it felt like oh, Tim it was Burton's like Angel Gotham City, City or something. Like, it, it was, was like very, Ang- it was very like is Batman going to show? Up? <laughs> it seemed very Gothamy. <laughs> He's wearing face paint like a yeah. clown. Fucking clown. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can we not swear? Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. It's after dark. Okay. That's that's what we're going to go Opinions with. Opinions may vary after dark. Mm. So you had like a bunch of topics for us. I did. I did have several topics. It's um, like a, it, it'll be like a history lesson. Yes. Um. One of them is pretty cool. Oh, they're all pretty cool. Let me bring up my notes here. Because John like mentioned some of the history things, and and like one of the simple ones is um is how when Halloween like began or before it was like officially a holiday. Yeah. Um. Like back in back in the British, they didn't have pumpkins. They didn't have pumpkins. Yeah, that's a bit of trivia. I love saying. <laughs> At my workplace, because I talk to the customers and the public there, mm-hmm. and uh, they'll say, "Oh, you're you're buying a pumpkin, huh? Uh, so, or something with pumpkin on it?" Because where I work, we have millions of different pumpkin things, uh-huh. and uh, and they're they're like, "Yeah," it's like, "Oh, you're gonna carve it? Did you know that over in uh, in England when they first started Halloween back in the way back, they didn't like pumpkins aren't native to that area of the world they're not native to england um so they used to carve turnips into jack-o'-lanterns because mm-hmm. you carved a scary face on it and on the night where the barrier between our world and the next was at its <laughs> thinnest that would scare the spirits away and that's why we also dress in costumes to and they would dance around in fires and these crazy costumes of monsters and witches mm-hmm. and to scare away the the things out there mm-hmm. the stranger things <laughs> I've never seen a turnip big enough worth carving. I don't know, man. They must be know. either really tiny hands or giant <laughs> turnips. I'm not sure which. But tiny knives, too. Tiny knives, like little like little needles, like little carving needles. So as soon as you brought this up, I recalled um, a trip that I took to my local library, mm-hmm. which was a while ago. But don't take my word for it. <laughs> it's, it's in a book. It's reading rainbow. Uh and it was like it was like in the children's section. It was this history of Halloween. Yeah, and it was one of the most in depth, like page <laughs> after page, had so many new things that I didn't know about, and it was explained so well, and yet still had pictures on each page. <laughs> Here's and, a fun pictogram, kids, of how to make your own sigil and, to summon a demon. And there was stuff about you know black cats and and the witches and pumpkins and a bunch of other stuff. And but it was years ago that I saw this book. I had more entertainment and knowledge out of like reading this book cover to cover, right? While still in a library, than I have ever gotten from any website on the internet. No internet has given me what I got from that book at that time. Satisfaction. And like, it's not like I read this as a kid. Like mm-hmm. this was uh, like after I got my bat tattoo at some point. Right. Right. So fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> 12. Twelve. No, uh, I was in my twenties by then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that reminds me. Uh, you remind me of. Uh, it's not really a history of Halloween, but it's a, a spooky book. Um, Chris Van Allsburg, who originally wrote the and drew the Polar Express and like Jumanji and like a lot of his stuff has been made into movies. Mm-hmm. Um, he wrote a book and drew a book called The Witch's Broom, where it's like it's it's mostly the visuals are kind of unnerving. The way he draws like stuff is kind of creepy. Um, but it's just a. Uh, like a witch t- tumbles out of the sky because her broom fails her or something. Like it's out of juice, mm-hmm. so she's injured. And this old lady like is like, "Oh, you need a place to stay." It's like, "Okay, you can, you can stay here while you heal up." So the broom is like animate mm-hmm. and helps her around the house, but it can't fly because it's like kind of crappy. Okay, um, <laughs> so uh, the witch like, like she shutters the windows and like she doesn't like move out of the bed for like twenty four hours, uh-huh. and then she's fine, and. Uh, and then what she does is, like, she takes a coal out of the fire and, like, just throws it into the air while saying something. And another witch, like, swoops down and picks her up. And then you <laughs> never see her again. Um, but it's just, like, creepy visuals like that. And I don't, it has nothing to do with the, this this Halloween topic, really. But, like, mm-hmm. just the visuals of, like, of like uh, and then the broom just stays with this old lady and, like, helps her out and stuff. And huh. then, like, uh, 
the town is like, oh, you're a witch. It's like, no, just, you know, she helps me. The broom helps me bring in groceries because <laughs> I'm old. Like, just leave me alone. But, like, it's, like, spooky stuff like that. That's that's pretty great. So um, something else that is, is tied into uh, education mm-hmm. is a book called The Halloween Tree. Okay. And what's great about that is that it's written by Ray Bradbury, who's, like, sci-fi titan Ray Bradbury. Mm-hmm. And you told me that... He's so popular that a, a lady singer has written a song about how she wishes to lay with him biblically. Yeah, that's, and that's from a couple of years ago. I'm, actually, I'm going to look at it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want me to talk about the plot of this while uh, you do that? Yeah. So the Halloween tree is about uh, these kids that go trick-or-treating who notice their uh, their friend Pippin has gone missing. Um. So they have to go to this old guy's house who I think, uh, um, his name is Carapace Clavicle Moundshroud, or Moundshroud, like Carapace, which is gross because it's a part of a bug. It's like the clavicle, you know, you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Moundshroud yeah. is like a burial mound. So he's like a creepy old man. And uh, so he takes them on a journey to find their friend, but also like they're all dressed up like, these Halloween characters and the, this old wizard or whatever he is, is like, you don't really understand what you're dressed as. Let me educate you. Mm-hmm. So, um, one well, kid is a skeleton. They go to the day of the dead in Mexico right. and like learn all about that. How it's not really a Halloween, like scary. It's really about like, I'm setting a place at my table with my family, another place for my dead grandfather. And uh-huh. in this more fantastical scenario, he comes back and eats with them and then leaves. Mm-hmm. And it's like a celebration of dead loved ones. Or like, we're going to Notre Dame because this one kid is a, uh, is dressed up like a gargoyle. And it's like, what's the history of gargoyle? And like, you were telling me that it's, it was named that because they're, they're basically downspouts. Yeah. <laughs> so for the gutters that are on the roofs of these, you know, old buildings in, in France and England mm-hmm. and that like the, rain goes down the gutter and then like it exits through this downspout and instead of just having like a pipe with water that gushes out of it they would carve a stone creature and the downspout came out of the creature's mouth so like this creature would just be vomiting water when when it rains a lot yeah and due to the noise that it makes it was basically a gurgle and that's where gargoyle yeah came from and how in this, and they adapted this later on into an animated film in like the early 90s. And then they were saying that gargoyles can only speak when water is flowing through their mouths. and uh, Which makes it harder to speak. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? I'm sorry. You better just like write it down because I can't, I don't know what you're saying. Um, He's going to get the paper wet. It's just yeah, it's a mess. Better, just put it, just, just text me. <laughs> just... Um, and then they go to ancient Egypt and, like, the awesome, like, they were a culture built around death. Mm-hmm. Like, and, like, uh, they would work for 30 years to build just where they would store their body. Mm-hmm. Like, pharaohs, would, when they died, it was all about, like, the afterlife and it was in everyday life. Like, uh, Isn't that great? Like, if you have the money to do that, though? Yeah. A giant uh, statue or, or pyramid built just and, in your honor yeah. and nowadays people are like i can't afford to die yeah i can't yeah. afford a burial or a coffin just burn me and throw me into the sea <laughs> but it's like no work for 25 years building me a golden triangle and then shove my corpse into it <laughs> that people thousands of years later will think are built by aliens by the way all my servants bury them with me too they're oh not, i need them they're I not dead them. yet i don't care i want that horse too <laughs> <laughs> all my cats Make sure they're buried in there with me. I want 5,000 mummy cats, please. <laughs> no one's allowed to come get me out. Yeah. So let's also put a curse on it, too, so no one can get out. Exactly. Open this and die. Cur- curses are the best. Uh, so they. Uh, so it was very... It's cool. It's, it's, uh, it's a great book, so I highly recommend it. And it's all about, like... Basically talking about uh, Halloween. Like, some people don't understand it. Mm. Like they're like... I just don't get this, like, spooky thing we do, like, with the trick-or-treating, and why is it so gory? It's, like, what it is, if you rip it all down to what it is, it's being, it's, like, facing inevitability, like, like mm-hmm. it's facing death, it's, like, looking it into the face, it's laughing at it a little bit, it's, it's being, it's having fun with it, mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, winking at the abyss, kind of. I've been seeing a couple of my cosplay friends. Yeah. Who are posted like every other weekend of the year? 
hey, want to go dress up with something else and go hang out with your friends? Yeah, sure. Hey, want to go do Halloween? It's like, ah, uh, I don't know. And so for like normal people mm-hmm. who don't just do this all the time, yeah, it's that moment. It's like you get to be someone else. Yeah. How often do you get to not be you? Also, yeah, that is a, a big factor in it where like in when it was called Samhain, spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, it would be this thing where to scare away the spirits because according to druidic like religion or pagan religion or whatever you want to label it as like Mm -hmm. uh that was the night you know the seasons were changing everything was kind of dying so it like literally looked like everything was like coming to an end that's Mm -hmm. when like the the barrier between our world and the afterworld was at its thinnest so spirits would slip through would get all spooky and scary and so you would like take on another persona like you would dress as a monster or like a uh, a thing and mm-hmm. then dance around a fire and like scare these things away like mm-hmm. and that's kind of like a ritual that's all over the place of you inhabiting another like like uh, personality briefly and that's fun this is my world yeah exactly you, you get out yeah get out spirits go back to your world not today Satan <laughs> <laughs> Don't you bring those double stuffed Oreos near me. <laughs> Not today. I will resist that temptation. I don't have that kind of willpower. Just Green Lantern that shit. I can't. It's too I'm just, I'm, delicious. I'm going to eat them, and then I'm just going to hope that all be well. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to hope that my <laughs> arteries aren't... That I don't get diabetes. Hard. I'm, I'm really more of a Blue Lantern yeah. <laughs> than a Green. Hope for a day that I do have the willpower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I have a coworker who has friends who are visiting who I, I think they were part of an exchange program at some point. Like she's been to their place and, mm-hmm. and now they're come, they've come here for a while and they're from uh, the UK. And so like all these, all these customs and the holiday of, of Halloween is like really weird to them. Like you were saying, it's a completely foreign thing. And just like the idea of trick or treating. Right, yeah. Where it's like you just go to strangers' houses and knock on their doors and expect them to give you things. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, we've been doing it for years. <laughs> like a long time. It's like years. <laughs> and um, I may be wrong about this, but I think I'm right. That uh, a lot of it came with like at the turn of the last century when we got that huge influx of immigrants in from Europe. Where it's like these customs started like becoming more in vogue. Because it was really the last century was like the Halloween century. Mm-hmm. Like, if you want to, like, it was many other things, like world wars and like technological advancements. We went to the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, uh, it started off small and then got huge. And, and like, uh, like at the tr- with these like traditions of pumpkin carving or carving something, because, you know, they were used to turnips. Um, but like, uh, and then the trick or treating and like the costumes and people were having costume parties like adults would be you know bobbing for apples and like mm-hmm. stuff like that like masquerade parties um, parties um, but uh, trick or treating like in the forties and fifties it got really like a big community thing and like uh, I'm I'm afraid that that's dying out and I don't want that to be because I I'm hearing of all these things called trucker treat or trunker treat yeah and that's kind of taking the mystery of the night away. Like the mysteriousness of going out as a kid in a costume into the night Mm -hmm. is like a, is like a thing you never get to do in a costume. Like that ritual is kind of like awesome. The leaves crunching and like you're going into these, these places like uh, going up to doors and getting, got to know maybe this one has a, has a guy in a bush. That's really the dad that he wants to, Oh, well there'll be a trick in this one too. I'm going to pop out and like, (laughs) yeah, just give me the candy. All right. We never go to old man Wilson's house. Yeah. He's weird, (laughs) but he gives out like full size candy bars. Yeah. But all the paper boys that go there keep disappearing. (laughs) Um, it's, there's people that complain about like, you know, youth today's they're getting to be like the term uses wuss or something yeah yeah and it's or like coddling is it like over coddling yeah. being overprotective the helicopter parents oh always hovering <laughs> and so the, i mean in this day and age like yeah there are like terrible things like kidnappers to be worried about yes whatever. kidnappers are always bad but uh that's why there's like a parent that goes with a group of kids right like so you know and but you're walking around the entire neighborhood mm-hmm 
So like the footprint of a parking lot where you go and park a car outside the school or whatever, mm-hmm. that's much less walking that the kid has to do. Yeah, yeah. And instead of decorating like your front porch, you're decorating the a trunk. The trunk. Like I love houses. That I saw some today on my way here. Like I love when they get into it. I saw a motorcycle that had a like a, a, a skeleton with the head of a dog strapped to the back. So as he's driving around, it was like, oh, here's here's I can go in the HOV lane because I got a buddy. Like you know, it was it was awesome. Like people, I love when they get into that. Like I'm in the process of hanging up glow in the dark skeletons all in my windows. Mm-hmm. Like it's great. And I don't do any decorating for halloween it's okay but i feel like a lot of my house is already <laughs> is is halloweeny you have like a you have a lot of stuff that's kind of cool that's creepy like. and but i don't really put a lot of it outside but on the other note like you know i'm i'm making zombies for yeah for almost 20 days out of the month so that's that's understandable but <clears> if i had a porch i would if i had my own house someday did you do i'm gonna go all out did you do boy scouts no, never did. Okay. My roommate did. He's an Eagle Scout. Andy? Yes. I'm not surprised with that. Yeah. I, why should have already He can guessed. probably tie a lot <laughs> of different knots. <laughs> um, but that was uh, a thing that that the, the Scouts would do, where they would have, like, a Halloween party. Yeah. You know? And it's one of those things that, like, you'll see in movies from the 80s or mm-hmm. something, or maybe the 90s. Yeah, early 90s, maybe. And it's, like, you know, the whole bobbing for apples thing. Yeah. Like, bobbing for apples at Halloween, or, like, a fall party of some kind. Fall, or, like, Or the my, Harvest Fest. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, I love that shit. Like, my, my high school, uh-huh. or my, no, it would be at the high school, at Fermi, they would have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it was great. Because Enfield's uh, better. Oh, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> Rivalry in town. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> Like, uh, there was the high school that we would go to and like, there would be teachers in sticking their heads out of, out of holes in a car and a cutout and mm-hmm. you would like soak the sponge and shaving cream and try to hit them in the <laughs> face or like, uh-huh. don't use your arms, but try to eat this powdered donut on a string. On a string. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, it's probably a really old party trick, uh-huh. like a party game. And that's great that like who, I don't know where that comes from, but it seems like something Victorian people in masks and, like, do. Re- and like, <laughs> And then, uh, like, reach through the the hole in the wall. Yeah, what is it? What's on the other side? It's brains. It's spaghetti. <laughs> it's it's just, eyeballs. Yeah. It's peeled grapes. Like, which I, I I don't know if we've talked about peeled grapes in the past. Have you ever tried to peel a grape? No, it's probably very difficult. <laughs> I imagine it's tough as hell. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> it's like they're so squishy. <laughs> yeah, they are very squishy. Um, someone told me it was easy. I brought that up, and someone's like, "Oh, it's not that hard." I have peel grapes all the time, and I was like, "Why?" Because uh, I wanted, I want to not chew. I just want my food just to like dissolve in the sweet melange. I just, just wanted to slide, slide down, down, just slide down my gullet. <laughs> I'm saying gullet right next to Jeremy's microphone, and I'm just like <laughs> exhaling all of my taco breath on it. It's a. Sh- I hope those kinds of parties like still exist. I would love to thing. have one. Yeah, I hope there's like. I mean, we're in New England, so I feel like there's places in the Midwest that still do fun stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, New England's got to have it because, like, we, like, made Halloween, I feel. <laughs> like, Salem, witch trials. I know there's no real witches there, but it's pretty cool. Well, we're going to talk about Salem later on. And uh, and uh, New York has... Um... Used to be called New Amsterdam. I know that much. What's, what's the Ichabod Crane? Oh, thank you for reminding me. Sleepy that's, Hollow. That's great. North Sleepy. Terrytown in the Hudson River Valley yeah. is called it's right there. Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. And it's great. That's where uh, Washington Irving lived, and uh, he's buried there, and there's, like, all sorts of stuff. I'm, I'm, I think I may have talked about this before, but it's, like, wicked cool. Mm-hmm. Like, and that story's great. Like, talk about a piece of Americana. Like, that's that's great. Like, um, like he... What's great is that if you look into it and, like, uh, he's supposed to be a Hessian. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, a uh, a shitty German mercenary for the British <laughs> who are just, like, these low-life killers for hire. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. he got his head – he lost his head in the battle and then he's, you know, he it's creepy. It's great. Mm-hmm. And, like, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't have a happy ending because we're pretty sure Ichabod Crane dies at the end. Like, he's never found. He's probably dragged to hell. Like, the great movie Drag Me to Hell. <laughs> that was great, huh? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. I guess you're not supposed to like the woman in the movie. I 
laughed at that movie a lot. And yeah, you should. The, I mean, but I'm but I'm like I'm really gross. Yeah. And so there's a lot of it was made to be funny, right? I don't think so. But Sam Raimi. I heard it was Sam. Ra- so I heard that um the entire movie is an analogy uh for um anorexia and what? like e- eating disorders. Weird. So I I I don't re- I don't remember any parts in the movie myself, but I remember like reading about this. Okay. <clears throat> And there's a lot of things that happen with her mouth. Interesting. And you don't see her eat anything. <clears throat> but when the old lady corpse like mm-hmm. rolls on top of her, and all her and embo- all her formaldehyde oh, yeah. flows out of her mouth, so like the old lady corpse is basically vomiting, like but a, she's like, a corpse, like a baby bird. And then into the live girl's mouth, yeah. Which is one of the things that I crack up the most at. Which this girl, you just like fell over a thing and like pulled the lady's yeah. corpse on top of herself. She's not likable at all, so it's okay. When she gets eventually, spoiler alert, dragged to hell, <laughs> you're like, all right, she kind of deserved it. <laughs> She's kind of a bitch. But there's a lot of parts in that where like people around us are all being grossed out and mm-hmm. I'm just like yucking it up. I think it's hilarious. And I, <laughs> I couldn't save, I couldn't do anything but laugh at certain parts. Not because like it was just, he didn't make slapstick humor. Yeah, but the things were so gross. Goat, the goat, the possessed goat. That was pretty slapsticky. Like there's a there's like a, a seance at one point, and there was a goat in the room. Oh yeah, because I had to be there I for ki- some reason. I kind of remember that part. And it just became. Oh like, yeah, alive. It was like, like a big like demon person. Yeah, like it was a puppet. Like <laughs> like it was great. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk about. Well, also real quick, mm-hmm. uh, a couple days ago it was the 23rd anniversary of Vincent Price passing away. Mm-hmm. And Halloween and horror movies haven't been the same. So, R.I.P. Um, 23 years? Yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, I believe uh, Edward Scissorhands was his final film. And uh, Now I'm trying to think of how old I, I was at that time. When he uh, passed away. Hmm. He's the man. He's, like, hands down top five. Maybe he might be my favorite actor. Like, he, I love him so much. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's just great. He seemed to... He has a great quote. That is, a man who limits his interests limits himself or limits his life. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's great. He actually, besides acting, he wrote one of the most comprehensive with his wife at the time cookbooks of all time because <laughs> he just loved – he was like a world-class chef. Really? And he, they just went around the world and collected, like, the greatest – it was called, like, Collection of Great Recipes. Hmm. And it was That book recently had its 50th anniversary, <laughs> and they had a new printing of it. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great. Hmm. My former roommate from Florida has an original, Ooh. like a hardcover original. Huh. So it was pretty baller. But uh, I wanted to say – uh, we were talking, we talked briefly about like the 60s and 70s and how that was kind of like a great time to like a Halloween, like heyday, like great costumes. Like I love the crappy store-bought costumes, the look of them. Mm-hmm. Like uh, so much so that there's a company now that make it's making like um, wall hangings of giant masks that look like you would buy them at a CVS back in the 70s. Really? And they're amazing. There's like a devil one and a Frankenstein and like they're amazing. But... Uh, I, that's that era is where actually um, what I'm about to talk about next. I believe this. Uh, it's urban you, legend. When you wore from. one of those costumes, yeah. you wore like the mask of the character, and then the face of the but, character. But then, like the plastic suit was basically <laughs> like a book cover. <laughs> yeah, it's so, like you weren't Silver Surfer. Your face was silver, but like you were wearing like a comic Silver book? Surfer number two or meets s- the Avengers. <laughs> And that's what all of them were. Like, yeah, yeah. You didn't, you didn't wear, like, He-Man's, you know, his, chest. His, like, chest. And you, like, you wore, like, a picture of He-Man of fighting He-Man Skeletor. He-Man just, like, screw you, Skeletor. <laughs> like, you didn't eat your vegetables today, so I'm going to punch you in the mouth, Skeletor. We, we could use more of those costumes, actually. That would be a nice throwback. Those would be great. But, like, adult-sized ones. But um, what I was eventually getting into is that there's a famous, famous urban legend Mm -hmm. of check your candy because uh there's gonna be pills in it it's not an urban legend (laughs) um well for the most part it is there i'm gonna talk about i occasionally check my niece's candy oh well you should there's i'm I'm not saying you should because (laughs) like just we live that's that's been a rule yeah yeah and like there's been times where either like uh, a friend's parents has like forgot yeah 
and they died. <laughs> well, I started checking they mine. They worm flew to the ground. And they're like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm checking my candy. I oh, so they sh- lived? Okay. <laughs> yeah, they, they okay. totally lived. But so like, I'm in the middle of checking. I'm like, making piles and everything. And they're like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm checking it. And like their mom goes, oh, right. We're supposed to do that. <laughs> wow. Darwinism. There, folks. Like... <laughs> Forcing your kid to... Oh, they'll build up a tolerance to the poison that they inject into the Snickers. <laughs> to have been ingesting a small dose of Iocan. Mm, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the only real case of that ever happening happened in 1974 mm-hmm. on Halloween night. Hmm. Um, this guy's kind of an idiot because <laughs> of the circumstances of the crime. Uh-huh. He's just an idiot. Like he's uh, he's he, an idiot for one trying to kill him at all, but like two for doing it so stupidly that so just, he did not pull off the perfect crime. No, no, he did not stab someone with an icicle. <laughs> 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 the perfect crime. <laughs> the um, evidence is gone. Where to go? It's just some water on the ground. <laughs> Uh, as if there'd be, as if you could tell when there's water surrounded by a ball of blood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a man stabbed in a room with no implements of killing in it, except there's a pile of water. <laughs> it's in a pile. Someone, someone left this pile of water. The here. door was locked from the inside. How would he do it? <laughs> um, but what I'm talking about is this asshole by the name of Ronald Clark O'Brien. It's okay. We can talk all the shit we want about him because he's a piece of crap and he's <laughs> dead. And he's known as the Candy Man. <laughs> so the guy with the hook for... Oh, no, no, no. He's and the quite, bees. No bees, huh? no hook, and he's quite Caucasian. He's kind of like just this Midwestern fat white guy. Huh. Um yeah, and uh, so if we say his name three times, like nothing's gonna happen. Actually, not Midwestern Southern. He's from in a Deer. mirror. Yeah, in a mirror, he will not. Just is like, hey, you want to buy some eyeglasses? <laughs> he was a he was an optician. Uh huh. Optician, sorry. Um, and from Deer Park, Texas, and he's convicted of killing his eight year old son Timothy on Halloween, nineteen seventy four, with potassium cyanide. So this is the story of that. So apparently. On that night, the mm-hmm. weather, just like tonight, wasn't that great. <laughs> it was a little bit rainy, kind of probably humid being Texas. And so they go just around their block, basically, mm-hmm. and get candy. Mm-hmm. Not too much candy. And so they get back to the house and they're, you know, dump out their pillowcases or whatever, take off their He Man mask and, and He Man costume with just He Man. <laughs> On the chest? On the it's chest. not He-Man's costume. It's just... Anyway. Um, this was like 10 years before He-Man existed. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was like an 80s creation. Um, but uh, so then um, the little kid, his son... Uh, what did I say his name was? Timothy, yes. His son Timothy was eating a pixie stick. And then he's like, Dad, I don't feel good. And then he started to vomit. And they were writhing. And then he died. And then um, the dad calls the cops, mm-hmm. and the cops are like, uh, well, what happens? Like, he ate some candy. It must have been something he got. Like, And so, uh, so you know, they, uh, they... Time to shut down the neighborhood. Yeah. Cordon off a perimeter <laughs> and do some police work. Um, they were great, actually, in this. They weren't bumbling Texas cops. They were actually good <laughs> at the job. Because, you know, he was, uh, you know, the past couple days after that, he was, you know, everyone was, like, giving him sympathy and blah, blah, blah. So the cops are, like, doing normal cop work, like, all around the neighborhood. Like, well, who is giving out pixie sticks? Yeah. Like, since they only went to a couple of houses. Right. No one was giving out <laughs> pixie sticks. Huh. Zero people uh. in 1974 that year <laughs> was giving out little tubes full of colored sugar. <laughs> Um, and so they're like, huh, that's a little weird. I'm going to take off my cop hat and scratch my head. That's a little strange. And so, uh, then they go back and then they find out that the daughter saw one Mm -hmm. in her thing too, Mm -hmm. but it was like stapled at one end, like reclosed, like an idiot would close it. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like a not smart person. 
<laughs> also, if you want to know more about this, mm-hmm. the story, they do an amazing episode of I Can't. I've been binging like everything about this this podcast. The last, the last podcast on the left, they're freaking phenomenal. But uh, And they probably do a way better job of, of talking about this than I do, <laughs> obviously. But, uh, You're doing fine. It's, so uh, then they investigate a little more and they find out that, oh, what did he do? What did the dad do? He just happened to have taken out some life insurance policies on his <laughs> children. What a strange coincidence that he just happened to die right after he uh, huh. he did that. Uh, his son you got to wait like at least a couple of years to cash in on that. Yeah, like... Uh, it's not how you do it. It's not just kill your kid and then all the coins and come collect. out of the, uh, <laughs> the slot machine. Um, but... Uh, so yeah, it was. <laughs> what? I just hit the dead kid lottery. Yeah, I just hit the dead kid lottery. Uh, I'm going to Disneyland without my kids because they're <laughs> dead. Because I'm an asshole and I killed them. Uh, I mean, so no, I didn't. <laughs> <this> is, <laughs> um, let's keep in mind it's Halloween. Yeah, and we're talking about a thing that happened in the past. We're not trying to make serious jokes about dead children. <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. I, I, I'm not making light of that. He was severely punished in the most harsh way possible and like and justly so because he's a terrible person and uh, i'm glad he's dead it's it's a history lesson yes yes that two dudes are talking about in cautionary a room, tale in a room for the comic books yes <clears throat> comic books and, and uh, memorabilia and uh lots of there's a lamp in here it's pretty great <laughs> um but uh so yeah they uh realize it's him they catch him mm-hmm. And then uh, he maintains his innocence the entire time. Okay. I'm like, yeah, which must have been someone else. I'm, I'm a cool dad. <laughs> um, How come your stapler is covered in sugar? I <laughs> what? Oh boy, <laughs> it's getting. What? He's throwing the heat in here. He's pulling out a shirt collar. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. Uh, oh, look at the time. I gotta get going. Oh, um, but. Uh, so no, it's not I, a pixie stick. It's just it's just a a, a straw wrapper. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Shut up. It's fine. Uh, but like he he actually, I think he was asking around before that, like, hey, where can I buy like? <laughs> can I just go to the pharmacy and buy cyanide? Like or like rat? It was like rat poison. I got a rat problem. <laughs> I got like an eight year old trick or treating rat that I just want to get rid of so I can be an asshole and live on that insurance policy. It's like, sir, you can't take an insurance policy out on a rat. It's like, <laughs> it's like I mean, no, I'm just going to take this rat poison and go. Goodbye. <laughs> so yeah, he, this asshole's caught and he's sentenced uh-huh. to death in Texas. Okay. Who is famously known. Yeah. For loving the death, death penalty. penalty. And so there's like this whole, uh, so as as it's told, as the story is told, and I'm not the first person to tell this, I'm mm-hmm. not the, and I'm, it's been told well, um, and often, that on the night of his execution, that there was like two sides of protesters. Mm-hmm. One, there was never anyone pro the Candyman. <laughs> Let's just make that clear. Okay, it's just that there was one side who was all like townspeople of that town and like he was known as the man who killed Halloween Mm -hmm. and I highly recommend there was a a documentary called Cropsey that was really creepy about urban legends that that ended up being true and then they made another one about urban legends and they talk about this one Mm -hmm. of the urban legend of poison candy and like well it's not an urban legend if it it happened and then this this is a big instance of that right so uh, so uh, one side there were people like kill this asshole like he should die he should be put to death for doing what he did and then there was another the other side was like just anti-death penalty. Mm-hmm. And so this was a big case. So to get, you know, pressed for their cause, they mm-hmm. were like outside of that. And uh, so um, there were people throwing candy at the anti-death penalty people huh. um, as like a symbolic gesture. But like he ended up being, he, it went off without a hitch um, as went off without a hitch as executions go that's kind of weird wording that i did that uh, but uh <laughs> he was the first person to be executed by ke- lethal injection in the state oh. of texas so uh yeah people um would interview him like phil donahue interviewed him they went <laughs> he did like a i huh. guess a stint of hard-hitting interviews with people <laughs> um and uh he was like uh he maintained his innocence to this day and he just was like uh oh, i was a good old boy like he was just <laughs> talking like a texas guy and <laughs> 
with his big old glasses, huh. his big old optician glasses. So, yeah, he is the Candyman. All the inmates knew him as the Candyman, and he hated that nickname. And, uh-huh. But they all called him the Candyman because he killed this kid. And the man who ruined Halloween for that uh, area of Texas. And for most, like, that specter, it, it lives on. Because, mm. you know, who doesn't, you know, you got to check your candy. even Right. Yeah. Even if the off chance. Which goes back to, like, a lot of, like, uh, like stories are, like, mostly in cases of abuse of some kind. Mm. Or, like, murder. It's usually, it's never, like, there's this urban legend that's usually never true of, like, the drifter. <laughs> like it was just some drifter, or yeah. or the the he was quote never unquote, caught, He's or like... yeah, or the quote unquote black guy, <laughs> right. like yeah, like yeah. which is terrible. But um, it's usually someone they know. It's usually someone they yeah. know that's doing this to them. Yeah, 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 and and that's just another case of that being true. So, the razor blades in apples. Yeah, that is a myth. I believe so. I believe because like that's they just... they stressed over and over again that this is the only time anyone has ever <laughs> been injured or like killed by mm-hmm. Halloween candy mm-hmm. um, or like needles or like mm-hmm. uh, you know someone tried to press a tablet into a Snickers bar like that someone's gonna notice that you're an idiot <laughs> like awful you're just awful I don't know like as a as a fat guy I just shovel you stuff just, like, in just shovel it in <laughs> like I don't know it's, it tastes like chocolate the wrapper comes off of that Milky Way and in it goes I don't really look at it <laughs> is, is it probably chocolate I hope so <laughs> is it a tiny poop Although, in a wrapper? <laughs> I hope not. Oh my goodness. I, that would I, be a trick, not a treat. <laughs> I do a lot of twisted stuff. Yeah. Uh, most Usually it's like as some kind of prank or just like set up a goofy image of myself. Right. Um, and so one of the things I was thinking of when we were doing pre-show for this, for this episode, I was like, where could I go and buy a bunch of apples and a bunch of box cutter blades, like in the same place. <laughs> this is only like Walmart. Would I guess because you can go to the grocery section and get apples. Yeah, and you can go like there have to be like a hardware section where like would it be hardware blades, or would please? it be like arts and crafts? Arts and crafts, like Exacto. Blades. Should I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exacto knives. Yeah, yeah. Just mm. stick an apple full of Exacto. The entire thing. Just leave the blade in the handle. Just like stick it all in there. So I. I think I have a new picture for my my next Tinder profile. There you go, there you go. But put a stick in it, like it's an apple on a stick, full of blades, like a tiny edible mace. <laughs> That's great, good idea, Alex. Do it's going to be an XD and D weapon too. Yeah, <clears throat> mace. That's also edible. That will degrade over time, so each hit is does less damage. <laughs> yeah. So you have to use it like very well the first time. I don't know. You should make him eat it, too. Yeah, like shove it in the monster's <laughs> mouth. Like, eat this candy. Eat this apple full of blades. What I have to roll to make the dragon eat my apple blade? <laughs> uh, in in pre-show, I, ca- I can't help but bring it up again. We were talking about Candyman, and I brought up like the movie series for Candyman. Right. And John uh, mentioned John Carpenter. Right? No. Well, Clive Barker did. Clive Barker. Yeah, that was yeah. it. Clive Barker. Mm-hmm. John brought up Clive Barker. And, uh, He's awesome. And uh, we both reflected because we both listened to his Nerdist episode with Chris Hardwick, which he had recorded like a year apart. Mm-hmm. Yes, because, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, they did like some of the time and Clive like wasn't feeling well. So they yeah, left. Yeah, he had like an illness of some kind. And he, he got really sick. I think he almost died. Like, yeah, he it was like super serious. close to dying. Yeah. Um, but then, like, Hardwick went back later to finish the episode. And essentially, like, he could have, like, uploaded or published, like, you know, the partial, the 20 minutes or whatever, 30 minutes that he had. Yeah, but that's but that's cool that he, he didn't. He sat on it for a year. How could that's, un- like... Until he went back to finish it. If I get someone a birthday gift, I usually just want to give it to them <laughs> right now. Like, I never want to wait. <laughs> Your birthday's in three weeks, but I can't wait for three so just, weeks. Just take this. Take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> And, you know, and uh, but listening to Clyde Barker talk, I like not recalling what he looks like. And I'm listening to the episode and I'm th- I'm think I'm hearing like an 80 year old man because he has a famously raspy voice. His voice is yeah. so scratchy and raspy. And like and since he was just like, you know, getting better from being s- sick for so long or so bad, so sick or uh, 
he was like short of breath and he was like it was a struggle for him to speak instead i looked him up and i'm like he looks healthier than i do yeah he's a fit <laughs> he's, dude he's he looks like a really good like early 40s maybe he could be you know 50 or what i don't even know all that terror that he inspires just <laughs> uh keeps the pounds off <laughs> and then and then i f- thought like listen to his voice and i came up with could you imagine clay barker and tom waits having a conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. It would be like two pieces of large grain sandpaper <laughs> scraping against each other. <laughs> just just listening to sandpaper. It's like, uh, it's like, we'll up like the devil in, in Dr. Parnassus. If you remember that movie, it was the last appearance of Heath Ledger. And then, uh, well, I guess Clive would be like, he's I, British, right? <laughs> I don't remember. It's been so long. Uh, well, the thing about Hellraiser is that uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pinhead's a metaphor for uh, the phallic <laughs> obsession of insertion. That's why all the pins are slowly getting into his flesh. And... I'm sorry, John, but that's not even close. No, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not even what it's about. But I just needed him to say something, okay? <laughs> yeah, to finish that bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have for, uh, for your history of Halloween? The history of Halloween. Yeah. Did you have any more notes? Um, I had some stuff about... Uh, well, it's called Sa- Wen, but it's spelled H-A-M-H-A-I-N. Like Sam Hain. Sam Hain, yeah. um, which some people pronounce like that, and that's mm-hmm. fine. But like the nerds and like the the nerds with the... You know, the pentagram tattoos who are like <laughs> the ones that say, do as thou wilt tattooed on there. Someone came into my workplace and she had that tattooed on her chest with really? like a pentagram on it. And I knew what that was, uh-huh. but like I feigned ignorance. Like, what a what a positive, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah, I'm going to get up and seize the day kind of thing. <laughs> like carpe diem. And she just like gave me these like coal burning hatred eyes <laughs> like no i am a disciple of alistair crowley you fool i shall spit in your food and make you shit snakes whatever <laughs> like it's like okay sure whatever that's fine <laughs> um but uh yeah it was uh, actually i know that halloween itself the the name is um it is a uh corruption of all hollows eve mm-hmm. which is um just like Christians love putting like to win over like for Christmas, you know if they've said that you know with the, if you want to say the Christmas story, like the stars in the sky would suggest that it's summer. If you know if the Magi are looking at the stars, okay. Of if he was if Christ was born and when that's all happening, it's yeah, like yeah. it's summer. Yeah. But there was a pagan festival that was uh, in winter, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, could you like convert but hey oh wait oh, okay okay like hear me out hear me out if you convert you can still have this but just call it a christmas <laughs> and then okay sure and that's i think where the word yule comes from because it used to be like uh you know that those name of the f- pagan stuff no. <laughs> um but uh so all hallows eve the next day is all saints day which mm-hmm. is like a christian holiday and mm-hmm. like uh so Sam Hain, um, I'm going to call it that because that's I like that pronunciation. Yeah, uh, me too. Uh, so they were like, uh, "Yeah, have your festival, you know, be cool." I'm like, "Yay, Jesus, you know, whatever." <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, just as long as you you know say you're on our team. Um, so uh, yeah, it would be a lot of like just you know what you'd think a medieval festival would be like, mm-hmm. like. I'm sure there was a lot of sex going on for one, like uh, in costumes, which would be like, wow, you good for you guys. You're really taking it to new places. <laughs> Is your relationship stale? Try going to a medieval festival in Sam Hain. You'll <laughs> open new doors for yourself. But uh, yeah, there was a uh, there was like you know feasting and like you know stuff like that mm-hmm. you know, in mm-hmm. costumes and and you know, hooping it up to the moon and like say get out of here, ghosts. <laughs> You're not welcome here. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty great. And, uh, so I say Sam Hain because I'm going to talk about, I believe I, I may have talked about this the last time I was here or maybe a couple times ago, but, uh, they tried to bring that back in a great movie called Trick or Treat, mm-hmm. which is a, like, a 
a Pulp Fiction version of like a Halloween movie where it's all different sorts of points of view that all converge on Halloween night. But the thing that ties it all together is like Halloween has never had the, you know, you have like vampires and like witches and ghosts and ghouls and goblins and all that stuff, but there's never like a central figurehead. You know, you can, you know, people who don't understand Halloween be like, it's the devil's birthday. It's like, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Someone told me that they, that she was a teacher and she was like, yeah, we can't do jack-o'-lanterns because some of the parents were like, yeah, in medieval times, they boiled babies in jack-o'-lanterns. It's like, no, you guys. What? That's not a thing. Please stop it. <laughs> um, so, uh, what, and in, back to this movie. I'm going off on a tangent. But uh, all of these tales are interwoven and connected, and the thing that connects them is the spirit of Halloween. Mm-hmm. They try to make a figurehead for Halloween. And his name is Sam, mm-hmm. and he is a, he looks like a little boy in like a little costume with like sack mask, and he's really great. And the, he is like all the traditions of Halloween personified. And if you disrespect the traditions, like if you blow out your candle and your if you don't let the candle in your jacket go out by itself, huh. and if you don't give out candy, if you're if you don't wear a costume, if you uh, are just stingy and like a if you're basically like Scrooge for Christmas, but on Halloween he'll find you. And he'll he'll uh, you know get you in the spirit forcibly, um, like uh, Brian Cox, the great character actor mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. Super Troopers and like a million other things. Um, he plays basically a Scrooge type in one part of the movie where he's like not giving out candy; he just wants to be left alone. Right. And then Sam is a trick or treater there, and he's uh-huh. like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> and then he's like, does a little creepy little head tilt. Uh-huh. Like, it's like, okay, okay. And then, you know, it just proceeds to terrorize this old man until he starts thinking about candy. Um, and uh, I won't give away the whole movie because it's really worth a, a watch. And he's fantastic, this character that they created. Um, I love him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that at one point he bites into a lollipop and uses the jagged lollipop as a weapon. <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> like, that's that's pretty freaking great. Like, So we're never going to find out how many licks it took? No. Just, he just bit it. He just bit it. One, two, <laughs> oh, 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 God, my neck. He stabbed my neck. Oh, God. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's so you have a favorite Halloween film. You are saying The Monster Squad. You're a big fan of that? I don't know if we've talked about it before. I, f- I feel like we may have. I may have okay. brought it up with, with JR. Okay. And um, I forgot who we would have talked about it with. It's pretty great. But. Though. Yeah, I love the Monster Squad. Yeah. Um, and it's often comparable to the Goonies. But at the same point, people it's, have heard of the Goonies. Not many people have heard of Monster Squad. It's in Squad. that tradition of like all, all the 80s movies are like, hey, kids, bye. Let's go like, on an adventure. No, it's like there's no no supervision. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was like real. Like <laughs> yeah. parents were like yeah. kind of like, I'll see you at dinner. Well, like, to go back to Stranger Things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, with yeah. that, like, the kids are just going to ride their bike home in the dark. Yeah. At, like, nine at night. It doesn't happen anymore. No, not at all. Not um, all. I also mentioned uh, a cool movie that I that I own on VHS. I don't know where I found it. Okay. Oh, no, it was at Media Play. Media Play. Remember Media Play? This comes up a lot. Yeah. Uh, it was I, a fun day. Great chairs. I wanted to buy those chairs. Very comfortable I, chairs. I bought a VHS of Nosferatu. Oh, yes, Nosferatu. And, yeah, and yeah. it's the original movie Nosferatu because it was a silent film mm-hmm. and uh and like it had like a, a music track to it but there was no dialogue okay and it was when you would like read the words in between panels right right yeah yeah um but it was completely remastered without the original like music track cool and it was replaced with songs from the band typo negative nice which, get it because blood so good <laughs> but they're also a very like they're a very I'm trying to think of the word I don't want to call them no I almost call them emo they're not emo oh, so you're trying but to like, like they, articulate the genre yeah yeah, yeah. There? they weren't like rock thrash metal okay but they were definitely like a metal-ish band mm-hmm. but they weren't exactly goth yeah yeah but like uh, somehow I forgot the, the name of the lead singer but he uh, someone compared it to being like he made a threesome sound dis- disappointing and depressing. <laughs> it's like, like really? <laughs> but that should be fun. It should be a fun time. Not like, all oh, right, I'm dragging my feet to the threesome. <laughs> Gee whiz. But that was a really cool thing to watch with the update. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. 
Cool. That's awesome. And I will say, even to this day, I've watched it. I think you can watch it on YouTube. I think that's where I watched it. Yeah. And the imagery mm-hmm. is so still creepy. Mm-hmm. It's so disturbing. Mm-hmm. Like, um, it's kind of like, uh, I think Anthony Hopkins was like, when he was playing Hannibal Lecter, he would base how he moved like on a lizard because a lizard will move his eyes mm-hmm. and then move his head. Yeah. And that's kind of like Nosferatu. Yeah, he yeah. would like notice something and then slowly move his head and it'd be real creepy. And that's when vampires, there, there's been a huge thing of like vampires being very beautiful and sexy and handsome and seductive, and Nosferatu was as ugly as shit. And that's cool. <laughs> like, like uh, I if, think if you're gonna be alive for a couple hundred years, like yeah. you're probably not gonna hold up very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the Bill Lugosi was like the first instance of like I'm gonna seduce you because mm-hmm. like he was, he got. He got some when he was alive. Like, he when he was younger, like, you know, he didn't have... Uh, there's no drafts going on, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, so, yeah, like, but even, like, biting the neck, that's kind of, like, sensual mm-hmm. in, in a way. So it is, mm-hmm. like, a metaphor, you could say, of, you know, sex. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, it is cool to see vampires being, like, these nargled things. Like, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna just rip your throat out. It's gonna be awesome. Like, <laughs> which I also learned like my own ineptitude. Yeah, because um, because I knew all about Bela Lugosi and his Dracula, mm-hmm. and then someone's like, "Yeah, and Christopher Lee," and I'm like, "Huh? Yeah, man." And like Christopher Lee was Dracula. And I was like, "No, Bela was... Lugosi's Dracula." And, like, and so it was explained to me. It's like so there was Hammer films. Yeah, Hammer, and then, and then there was everything else. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I, a, a complete like newbie, mm-hmm. thinking I know things about horror movies and, and classics, and in reality, I'm I'm a putz. So what's great about he was not well, Bela Lugosi was Dracula. The guy who was Nosferatu was Nosferatu. He, Christopher Lee was not just Dracula. He was Dracula the most <laughs> out of anyone who's ever been Dracula. <laughs> he was in like over ten films as Dracula, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like. That's amazing. Like <laughs> with his like best buddy in the whole world, Peter Cushing, who would always be Van Helsing. Oh. Um P- Peter Cushing probably most famously Grand Moff Tarkin uh-huh. in uh-huh. Star Wars New Hope. Yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, they were like best buds. And I read that to get Peter Cushing out of a funk, if he's ever sad, uh-huh. Christopher Lee would do his Yosemite Sam impression. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> like can imagine. you imagine that? Nope. <laughs> Like Can't her, uh, rootin' tootin', god darn it, god damn it, I'm gonna shoot that rabbit. Like, it, what? It's Christopher Lee. It's Christopher Lee, Oscar-winning Sauron, Count Dooku, like Dracula, Christopher Lee. Um, The Undertaker has a really good Dracula impression. Really, the wrestler, of the yeah. Undertaker. Like, yeah, he can yeah. do Belagosi. Yep, that's cool. Yep, that's cool. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, at this point, uh, I'm going to... Did you just water drip? I did not. T- I don't even know how to do that. I thought I heard something. I heard that too. Maybe your house is <laughs> haunted by a douchebag. <laughs> it better be. It's 160 years old. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'm going to throw in a, a clip that I recorded earlier today um, with our friend Joe. Uh, Joe was last on episode, I believe I said 154, which by the way, John, your last episode was 201. Ooh, child. So it hasn't been a full year. It's, okay. only, it's only been 40 episodes or, okay. or 40 weeks. All right. It's, All right. Yeah. Settle down. Um, to maintain some of the spirit of Halloween and um, the things that might scare people, intimidate people. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked to Joe about a, a new job that he has. At the Satanic Temple Ooh. in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, Where you can get all the free red Kool-Aid because it comes from the walls. <laughs> I assume it just bleeds. The walls just bleed all the time. It's, you know what? The, Joe talking about this was like one of the most sophisticated, educated guests like we've ever had. Oh, we're like doing like <laughs> dead kid jokes over here. It's, yeah. Yikes. He, it like, he made us, I was... He's just talking, and I was like, wow, this is... I'll stop talking about it. Um, But I thought, like, 
people's interpretation of of Halloween, things that are scary, things that frighten them, and demons and creatures with horns and Satan and yeah. devils. How it came they, from Pan originally and all that sort of imagery, and mm-hmm. then they just like doctored it up. Oh, that's mm-hmm. what evil looks like. And he has a really good explanation of why. Yeah. They focus on the imagery of of like Bathel Man, yeah, like something like that, yeah, and uh, and that kind of stuff. So that's gonna come up next. All right, we're on the uh, the Facebook uh, voice chat with Mister Joe Sherry. You haven't heard him since episode one hundred fifty four, but we have him back on. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm great. Uh, as Part of our last uh, Halloween episode for the month of October, I wanted to try something a little different because we usually talk to people about horror movies. I mean, we might still do that. And we talk to a lot of other people that do haunted house stuff, and I try to get makeup people on. Um, but you currently picked up a really cool gig that is, seems like perfect for you, and that is working at the Satanic Temple in Salem. That's it, yep. Is this... Uh, uh, do you have like a synopsis or something you have you've done a, a thousand times already? Uh not really. No, I'm the assistant manager over there, um, and it's really a pleasure. It's the only satanic temple that has a physical building right now. So we're the international headquarters, uh-huh. um, and we house the infamous Baphomet statue that has been on the news a fair amount. Um, it was going up against the, the Oklahoma State Capitol when they had the Ten Commandments on display. Mm-hmm. So people think we might have multiple statues, and it's really the only one. So it's kind of a cool thing to have here in Massachusetts since um, it has been covered on international news, BBC. Um, we just had a Vice article go live, a video article that's really a lot of fun. People should check it out. And that's the one that was yeah. like Kickstart funded, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it was uh, GoFundMe. Oh, GoFundMe? Or, okay. Yeah, yeah. One Indiegogo, of those Indiegogo, crowdsourcing Indiegogo. things. Yeah. <laughs> And so I've JR has had to stop me in the past because I go on and on about how much I enjoy Salem and how many different things are to do there. And it's not just like spooky Halloween stuff. There's a lot more cool things going on. And so is is this considered more of like a, a museum or like a, a historical place or what what is it to people? Uh, we're an art gallery first and foremost. So awesome. as the international head, we actually feature, like right now we have Chris Andres, um, who's an Albuquerque, New Mexico artist. He does fantastic work. Um, it's very inspired by Clive Barker, and he kind of does a beauty and the grotesque type of mix. Um, I've called it like a thematic chiaroscuro, like the dark and the light are both kind of in relief to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and his work is being featured until January. Um, we also have photographs by Mark Porter, um, who was the sculptor of the Baphomet, mm-hmm. and he did a series of portraits of the original clay sculpture before it went and uh, got cast in bronze. Hmm. So that's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, most most of all, we are an art gallery. I dig art galleries. How... Me too. <laughs> now, were you already were you already in touch with the people before uh, this became a thing, or like did you get hired on afterwards, or how how did you pick up this job? Um, I actually helped prep a lot of the property. Like I did everything from yard work to some painting outside. Um, then I started, you know, I was going to work in the gift shop, and I had some friends, and so I started kind of staffing informally, and then, you know, it just kind of became clear that I uh, was the right man for the job. Um, a good friend of mine, Nira, is the director of the um, the property. She did beautiful work um, restoring the house. It's it was built in 1883. Hmm. The walls were in a little bit of disrepair, everything else. So she did a lot of the internal stuff. I did some of the external stuff. And we just, we've been prepping it for a while. There was a, a little preview about a year ago of William Mortensen's photographs before we were open officially. Um, and, you know, it's it was just climbing the ranks and knowing, being able to kind of switch between jobs, which in any type of management I think is the most efficient way to get things done is have one guy who can kind of do a lot yeah 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 yeah. so that's that's usually how it goes uh, with other places i've seen like especially like i don't want to say like that's part of the entertainment business but if someone who's in charge can direct and build sets and you know act you know and this way they have an idea of how much needs to go on you know for for a project to get finished yeah, exactly. It's a lot about being able to switch quickly, seamlessly, and also being able to delegate the things that aren't exactly your strengths. Like, honestly, um, organizing T-shirts, that type of thing, can be 
pretty tedious for me because I'm, I'm creative and I like to kind of like not get into the minutia and the OCD thing. But, mm. you know, hiring people that are better at that kind of a thing and actually like doing it and there are people um, is really the key. It, it is a lot like directing and having directed uh, filmmaking projects and whatnot. It, um, I see a big overlap mm -hmm. and I think it's actually going to help strengthen my creative endeavors. Awesome. Um, so, absolutely. When this was rolling around like as an idea like i'm not sure how much of the the making process you had uh, but once it was decided that they were going to go through with you know having a satanic temple in in salem massachusetts was there a lot of like debate of would it be worth it should we do it will there be a lot of uh i want to say what's the term this is where I would normally jr would help me out with words like a lot of kickback or or um antagonists or or opposition i guess a lot of those decisions predate uh, me being brought on mm -hmm. but um i know that a little bit of the thought process i mean it helped that we had the building donated to us um so that that made where we were going to do it pretty easy also you know we're in a town where religious persecution has resulted in the death of you know 19 innocent women back in the days of the witchcraft um trials mm -hmm. and the town itself seems like they don't want to repeat those kind of mistakes. So they've been extremely um, easygoing and helpful. You know, whether it's permits or whether, you know, from the town itself or the citizens of the town, we've actually been welcomed. And I wish I had some scandalous stories about crazy <laughs> protesters and stuff. But we had, like, one ever, and it was for a couple hours one afternoon, yeah. and it got resolved very quickly. <laughs> it's been um, – I literally have had more bad experiences in, like, food service or even, like, back – 10 years ago working at Hot Topic when we don't have a shirt in somebody's size, <laughs> I've had more trouble than opening a satanic temple. So it's really a weird, weird phenomenon. Huh. But it's been, it's been great. I, I'm really happy with the amount of range of people we've had coming through. I mean, literally everyone from soccer moms to goth, industrial, black t-shirt crowd. And mm. everyone has been so wonderful. Has there been... Do you, do you think you have like a percentage in mind of how many of the people you would expect, like you want to say the the black t-shirt metal goth kids, compared to like the people who just kind of want to wander up and say, what is this thing that showed up in my town? I would literally say it's almost right down the middle because, <laughs> um, you know, there's tourists that are in and you can you can tell when someone's more of like a, a tourist and like I'm going to wear a witch hat today, but this isn't my lifestyle versus... Right. They've got jack o' lanterns tattooed up and down their arms, mm. and uh, you know I can kind of, I can say that because I do myself. Um, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I'm one of them, <laughs> and you know I I trying to walk the line and you know tell people what they want to hear, but also really just educate people because social justice is a big thing that we're fighting for. You know we're not occultists mm -hmm. as much as we're trying to rebel you know, against some of the government's worst policies, you know, whether it's involving female reproductive rights or whether it's, you know, just involving freedom of religion and separation of church and state. We're really on the front lines battling that stuff. And being able to talk to people from different backgrounds and educate them, and it's not just about occult imagery, has really been um, important to me because I'm at the point now where if you're not if you're not actively trying to fight the problems that plague the people in our society, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's misogyny or xenophobia, then you're kind of perpetuating it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you have to actively be fighting. I don't think there's a time to be indifferent anymore. So the fact that I can be employed by a place that also has philanthropic um, interests really is about as happy as I can be, you know. And um, I've noticed that people that would seem rebellious to other people, like the aforementioned tattooed folks and stuff, mm -hmm. really do care about equality, you know, and, you know, maybe it's them being judged for the way they dress or whatever it is, but they seem really concerned about trying to make the world a little bit better place to live in, even for people that don't look like them, but just, you know, in general. Right. So it's really, it's really nice just to see, you know, people that look like these, these punk rebels really just fighting the battle. Uh -huh. for the rest of us. Yeah, man. It's all it's all good news, you know. It's it's all really who who would have thought that the most positive experience of my employable life would be at a place, you know, with symbols of the devil everywhere. Well, <laughs> sometimes it takes the devil to get things done. <laughs> uh now is there a like a specific version of Satan or like the history or the or the religion or anything that that the churches or not, or that the temple is 
perpetuating or is it just like is it taking things out of the satanic bible by anton lavey or is is it more wider scope than that yeah that's a great question i'm really glad you asked it because we are not lavey and satanists okay um the the satanic temple uh differs from the church of satan which was lavey sect right and that we don't really believe in the occult um as much as we use satan as an allegory okay so we use the classical symbol of satan mm -hmm. like uh, paradise lost milanesque version of satan and he is he's romanticized because he was the one one creature one being that was willing to go up against you know god himself so if you want to form an organization that is fighting the government um and you know fighting some of those bad policies you know what better sim to be symbolic of the ultimate rebel than satan himself you know so we really do use him as a metaphor as opposed to a literal interpretation, mm -hmm. um, it would be impossible to be to believe in a literal Satan if you didn't believe in a literal God. And since you know we don't <laughs> right. uh, believe in God, we also don't believe in Satan. Exactly. Um, right. He's right. merely a symbol. That's. But uh, yeah, Levey himself believed in a lot of um, occult phenomenon. He also had some really weird uh, theories. If you ever read like the Satanic Witch, mm -hmm. he. Um, he said that liking certain types of salad dressing had an influence on your sexuality. Like, if you were a male and liked creamy ones like blue cheese and ranch, that actually made you a homosexual. So huh. I'd rather distance myself from any of those ridiculous beliefs because what he did is not what we do. Okay. That's... I feel like that might be a very difficult thing to get away from. Considering, like, he's had so you know all his books published and... It's like one of the first things that the rebellious kids, you know, swing to 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 have to, to have something in their hands to be like, no, look what I'm doing, and then to say like, well, that's not exactly what we're up to. I imagine like trying to make that divide is. Do you consider that a struggle, or is it just like it's education will pretty much do the trick? I think it's a necessary evil. I mean, coming from a high school kid that had a copy of the Satanic Bible in my back pocket most of the time, just to kind of keep people away from me, <laughs> I can um. I mean, I appreciate some of the early things I read, you know, things like psychic vampires, people that just kind of drain your energy. Like, that really resonated with me as a young kid. Mm. Um, I think that he was a lot about shock value. I mean, he had a carny background. Yeah, yeah. And he was a showman, first and foremost, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think we have a more sophisticated view. Of course, we're going to say that. But the Church of Satan itself is pretty much defunct now. They're not really very active. Mm hmm um, they charge like two hundred dollars to be an official member, which gets you really nothing. It's really kind of a silly thing. Um, so you know, we've had a lot of people that confuse the two of us, but mm -hmm. anyone that takes the time to come through, we're happy to talk to and kind of set straight and just you know teach them what we're about. And most people uh, really feel that what we're doing resonates with them. Mm -hmm. We haven't really offended any Church of Satan members for the most part, and um, you know, I don't mind explaining it time and time again. I, I know that using Satan as our symbol, you know, we're going to get some of that. But again, I really couldn't think of a better symbol to use for what we're trying to do. Um, so, like I said, it's a necessary evil, mm -hmm. pun fully intended. <laughs> One of the things I, I saw early on when I was kind of like following when, when it first opened in like the first couple of weeks and so, um, was that there wasn't, you know, enough time or, or uh, staff for like, to have regular hours, there was like there was scheduled tours. Has that been expanded now for for people who want to come who want to come see? It has, yeah. Um, for the for Friday and Saturday this week, in honor of the holiday, we're actually open from noon till midnight. Um, you know, if anyone wants to stop by, and then we're open until ten o'clock um, on Sunday and on Halloween, and then we're gonna go to kind of a normal schedule of just six days a week, um, one o'clock to uh, eight o'clock from Tuesday through Sunday. It's going to be regular, but we're going to be closed on Mondays. Don't come by. <laughs> That's sleepy day for us. <laughs> um, All the Christians can rest on Sunday. We rest on Monday. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for, for joining us and, and educating us a bit. It was a pleasure. Thank right. you for having me on. And... Anytime. I'm hoping to, uh, you know, if, if you heard about us on the podcast, please let me know. Um, and I'll be happy to give a little extra when I... And I see you in person and give you the personal tour. So, is there a uh, like a, a website or or a, some kind of page for Facebook up and running for the temple? Or there is uh, the Satanic Temple HQ is our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to like us and review us, and um, 
you know, again, let us know if you heard us, heard about us on Opinions May Vary. And, um, yeah, that'd be great. All right. Thank you so much. I hope we, we'll, we'll have you back on before another uh, 90 episodes goes by. I'd love to. <laughs> Always fun chatting with you guys. All right. So thanks to Joe for joining us again. I, we really appreciate that here. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, this was number 241. And I was Alex. And I was John, the master of fright. And don't sleep too soundly tonight or you won't feel me caressing your cheek as you drift off into dreamland. See you soon, but you won't see me. <laughs>